good morning welcome welcome to positive vibes so today i am going to do um well we rather we're going to do a um a bible study but i am going to wrap it up in the form of positive vibes so this is going to be basically what our um bible study our weekly bible study is going to be it's going to be positive vibes um and i just kind of wanted to share some devotionals with you guys and you know wrap it wrap it up with the bible study and everything so that's kind of how it's going to um, happen it's going to be and we're going to get into the word and you know dissect it take it apart and see how it applies to our lives so that we can apply it to our lives right so we're gonna see what the word says um, about us and we're gonna see what the word is saying to us today and many of you know or you don't know not sure but the word is God okay so when we open up the Bible God is speaking to us sometimes he speaks to us audibly sometimes he speaks to us through his word Sometimes he speaks to us through people, through a message, through whatever, a dream, a vision. He speaks to us in many different ways. And the devotional that I'm using is um, by Sarah Young, and it's Jesus Calling. I absolutely love this devotion, um, this devotional book. My mother-in-law actually um, had this book, and... Um, in her passing, we were able to get this book and just really, you know, remember her by it and all the wonderful things that she has written on the inside of it. And so for me, it's not just a book, it's a treasure, it's a gift, and I am super duper grateful to have a piece of her with me every single day. Um, so thank you, Pat for the blessings. And yeah, so today is January 24th. Let me not make that mistake because I totally thought yesterday was Wednesday and today is now Friday. <laughs> so I did not get this Bible study up yesterday, which that's what I was aiming for, but so many things happened yesterday and I just was not able to get it done for you guys. So I do apologize. So I'm getting it up for you today. And I'm also going to be putting up a shop with me thrifting video today, but that's going to be later down today as well. So if you have not yet subscribed to my channel, I would love for you to go ahead and do so. Also hit that bell down below so that you will get new notifications for when I do upload um, videos, you guys will get it in your notification feed. Also, please, please, please comment down below because I love to hear all y'all comments. And I am so grateful to God that we had such great feedback on the, um, you know, Push Tuesdays. I did not know how it was going to go over, but I am so grateful that um, it has been such a blessing to you guys. And of course, it's definitely a blessing to me. And I am grateful. So we are going to get into this word today. Before we do get into the word, I would love to invite you guys to go over to my Instagram, Regal Designs by Shoshana, and you can follow me there. I do a lot of background action and, you know, home decor stuff and everything like that. So lots of inspirational quotes and messages. So make sure you head over there after this video um, and, you know, follow me if you like. I would love for you to do so. And yeah, let's get into this word. I'm reading from the, the devotional. And if you do have a devotional, le link it down below and um, you know let me know what it is because I love devotional books. I think that for me, it's so much easier for me to really get into the word and kind of understand it. I don't use the King James Version with it when it comes to my Bible. I use the NIV or the message because it's layman terms. It's just plain, it's simple, I can understand it. And it's just easier for me to, you know, to dissect it and to apply it to my life. So I do use the King James Version. Let me show you what it looks like. And of course, it's pink. <laughs> so um, yeah, I, I really do love it. But let's get into the word here. Okay, so I'm using the Jesus Calling devotional. And it's January 24th. And it goes as follows. 
My peace is the treasure of treasures, the pearl of great price. It is an exquisitely costly gift, both for the giver and the receiver. You receive this gift by trusting me in the midst of life's storms. If you have the world's peace, everything going your way, you don't seek my unfathomable peace. Thank me when things do not go your way because spiritual blessings come wrapped in trials. Now that's a bomb, y'all. Adverse circumstances are normal in a fallen world. Expect them each day. Rejoice in the face of hardship, for I have overcome the world. And the scriptures that this is taken from is Matthew 13, 46, in the uh, New King James Version, James 1, um, verse 2 to 3, and John 16, verse 3. Um, verse 33, I'm sorry. And we're going to go over those scriptures. But before we go over anything, we would like to invite the Lord to just come into our Bible study and blow our minds. All right. So let's do this right now. Father God, we just thank you this morning. We repent of all of our sins, Lord God. Anything spoken, unspoken, done in our thoughts, in our minds, or in our hearts, we ask that you forgive us, cleanse us, and clean us right now. Open up our minds and our hearts, Lord God. Prepare us to receive, hear your word, Lord God, and to be doers of your word as well. We pray for great understanding, wisdom, and knowledge, Lord Jesus, oh God, that you will pour it in this morning into us and that we can be who you have called us to be, God. Lord, we just thank you and we praise you. We pray, Lord, that you are so evident right now, Lord, and that your Holy Spirit take over and have his way. We bless you, God, in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, so we're talking about peace today. <laughs> we're talking about peace today, okay? So my peace is the treasure of treasures, you guys. There is nothing more valuable on earth. And we're kind of going to dissect this whole little paragraph right here. If y'all can see it. We are um, going to dissect it. So peace, it's, it's extremely valuable. I feel like peace for me and, you know, maybe not for everyone else, but for me, I feel like peace is more valuable than money. It's more valuable than things. It's more valuable than anything that you can ever accomplish here on this earth. Because if you don't have peace, you are liable to lose it. Okay? And let's be real. We have things in our lives every single day. Every single day that can cause us to go crazy and lose our peace and lose our minds. Right? For example, just right before I sat down to do this Bible study... I got a phone call from my son's school stating that my son was marked absent today, that he has an unexcused absent. And I'm just like, how can that be? Because I dropped him off myself, <laughs> okay? 7.30 this morning, I dropped him off in school, so I know that he's there because I watched him walk through the doors, okay? So then the school is telling me, okay, we're going to check and let you know. No, you're going to check while I'm on the phone, okay? <laughs> So that I can know for sure, for sure, that my son is there. They go, they check that he is in school, and it turns out the person that's in charge of the attendance marked my son absent by accident. Now, is that something that will cause me to lose my cool? Yes, it, it could have caused me to lose my cool if the response was completely different on the other side of the phone, right? I could have lost my temper. I could have lost my cool. I could have just go crazy. How could you mark my son absent? What kind of school is this? I could have went crazy, right? But instead, I realized that it was a distraction because of what I was about to do. So the enemy comes in and he tries to bring distractions using those things that are personal to you or that mean something to you like your peace, tries to take your peace in every single step of the way. But I was determined to get this Bible study done and I was determined to not lose my cool and to allow the Holy Spirit to work inside of me with peace, right? So I kept my peace and after the phone was hung up, I still had my peace. So 
is it valuable it's extremely valuable and the, his uh, it says here my peace is the treasure of all treasures now you know a treasure is something that you hold dear to your heart right whatever it is you hold it very dear to your heart and peace peace should be very dear to our hearts as wives as moms as daughters as businesswomen as entrepreneurs as content creators whatever it is peace should be your number one factor in your life because without it you have nothing else jesus said my peace i leave with you right that's one of the most important gifts that we could ever receive is god's peace right so it says the pearl of great price it's the pearl of great price he he paid jesus paid the price for us so that we can have peace so that we can have love so that we can have kindness in our hearts he paid the price so we can have life and have it more abundantly but it's like if you don't have peace none of that stuff really even matters right because it kind of hinges off of off of peace just like everything hinges off of love it works you know together it is an exquisitely costly gift he paid that gift with his blood both for the giver and the receiver y'all for jesus for god peace is a treasure because he is the prince of peace he is the prince of peace and so if we are in christ right and and we are his we're coheres with christ and we're his kin we're his child that means that because he is peace, we too are peace, right? That, that's what that's saying. We too are peace. We too have peace. So when you are faced with circumstances and situations and things that seems to drive you nuts throughout the day, your kids are going crazy, your spouse is driving you up, say, up, up, you know, insane and up the walls, your job, your boss is acting all matters of nuts, like whatever it is, you can just maintain your peace. Peace be still, y'all. Peace be still. Though the storm may rise, peace be still. I'm asleep. I'm going to take a nap just like Jesus did. <laughs> okay. I am going to take this year, 2020, I am going to rest and I am going to take a nap just like the Prince of Peace. Come on, y'all. Y'all know what I'm talking about. You receive this gift by trusting me in the midst of life storms. So it's a gift. It's a gift to have peace. And when when we trust God, we're, we're letting go of everything, right? We're saying, God, you know what? Though this situation right here is, is crazy, though I feel like I can just lose my cool and go postal, I'm gonna choose to trust you. I'm going to choose to operate in your peace because it's your gift to me. Your gift to me is that I can walk in peace, I can live in peace, I can have peace, and whatever it is that's causing my peace to be tested, I got to get it out of here. I can't I can't keep, you know, dealing with the same men. I can't keep dealing with the same situations. I it's 2020. I can't bring a 2019 mentality into 2020 because God wants me to have peace. It's his gift that he has given to me. If you have the world's peace, everything going your way, don't seek my unfathomable peace. <laughs> like, the world can't give you peace, y'all. It's nothing but turmoil and bad news and disaster. The world cannot give you peace. Peace only comes from God. It only comes from being in Christ. And like the word says, if we are in Christ, we are a new creature, right? And so... When you were in the world, you were dealing with things that causes you to go mad, that causes you to go haywire, that causes you to fly off at the handle, right? That causes you to want to go postal, you want to fight, you want to, you know, the least little things cause you to lose your mind, right? But now, now we are in Christ, we're a new creature, right? And so now we can take his peace on us and, and use it as a garment 
right? That's awesome. We can use his peace as a garment. But he said here, thank me when things are not going your way. Now, you see, everything is opposite when it comes to the kingdom of God. And you have to realize when, when, when the world is saying to hold on to stuff and don't give and keep and save it, God is saying, no, open your hands and give. When the world is saying, be stressed out, be a mess, cry, scream, do what you got to do to, to, God is saying, no, 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 mm -mm, mm -mm, don't do that. Don't do that. Rest in my peace. Rest in my peace, right? Because when, when things go wrong, all you need to do is, is, is thank me. That's all you got to do is thank me. And do you ever notice that when you're dealing with a certain situation and you're able to look past that situation and say, you know what, God, I thank you. I thank you for the great and mighty things that you are doing in my life. I thank you, God, for my home. I thank you for my family, my my husband, my children, God, my, my, you know, my spouse, God, I thank you for a career. I thank you for a business that's thriving. I thank you for people in my life relationship that, you know, people that are for me and not against me. God, I thank you for having me in my right mind. Lord, I thank you that I even woke up today, that you gave me the gift of life. You ever notice that when you are grateful, how his peace that surpasses all understanding, how it just comes upon you. It's almost like it turns you into a different person when you are grateful. When you are grateful, even though you look around you and it's going crazy, by the way, don't pay don't don't pay attention to this fall sign. As you can see, I still have my fall sign up. I'm redecorating everything. My office is back, you guys. My daughter, she's just like, Mommy, you can have your office back. It's okay. I'll do my gymnastics in my room, but you can have your space. Um, and I know I'm going off on a tangent, but I'm just saying, when when everything is haywire, because right now, the way that my office looks is not the way that I want it to look. I love organization. I don't like chaos. And there's paper all over the place. There's wires all over my floors it's crazy right now in my space but i still have peace because i trust god i have let go of all of my inhibitions i have let go of my own will and i have surrendered my all to my father and because i trust him i can have peace that no matter what comes it may, it may cause me to just feel a little discouraged a little bit. It may cause me to feel like, oh my gosh, I want to give up. But at the end of the day, when I remember where I used to be and where I am today, and I can just trust God because I trusted him before and he did what he did to bring me to this point, I can trust him. I can trust him with my life and I do trust him with my life because he has been he has been so much to me and he has proven himself in so many ways, you guys. And so when I trust God, when all things are not going the way that I want to, I know that I can revel in his peace and that he is my refuge and my fortress, right? He says, thank me when everything is not going your way because spiritual blessings are wrapped up in trials. Now, he said we were going to go through things. He never said it was going to be easy. He never said that this life was going to be a cakewalk. Uh-uh. He said you're going to go through stuff. You're going to be persecuted for my sake. But I'm with you even until the end. He has overcome the world already. And so we need not worry about it. We need not worry about anything that we are facing. We need not worry, y'all. Because worrying is a sin and it is the complete opposite of peace. When we worry, we drive ourselves crazy. And did you know that worrying is actually linked to your health? That when you worry, you're causing your health to deteriorate. You, you ever realize that when you worry, you get headaches? You start getting palpitations? You start getting all types of stuff going on in your body? It's because we're not built to worry. We're not built to do that. We are built to have peace. We are built to have peace. And so he says that our 
spiritual blessings are wrapped up in our trials because when we go through stuff that's when we find him the most you want to find jesus you want to know him for real for real go through what you got to go through don't complain but go through what you got to go through okay because i'm telling you that fire will be turned all the way up all right and the only person that you can call on or seek is the capital g o d mama can't help you daddy can't help you your spouse can't help you i mean it's 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 really really real y'all when you go through something in your life and you see no other way out come on we've all been there We've all been there. Some of us are going through that now, right? Where you feel like, God, there is no escape. Like, there is no escape. And unless you learn what you're supposed to learn in that situation, you're not coming out <laughs> until you learn, okay? You're not coming out. And what's going to happen is you're going to continue to repeat that cycle, right? So sometimes God allows us to go through things so that we ourselves can change right we want to change everybody else around us we want to change the circumstances around us we want to change our environment we want to change this sometimes it's good to change your environment sometimes it's good to change your circumstances you know situations around you but majority of the times god is trying to change you he's trying to change me so that we can better handle and deal and go through what we got to go through. And most of the times we make it so hard, right? The children of Israel, come on. How long were you supposed to be in this whole situation? We wasn't, so, they wasn't supposed to be there for that long, but because they murmured, they complained, they came up with false idolatry, gods and all this stuff. And God is like, listen, you're not, you're just not learning. I'm sending you sign and wonders. You know what I'm saying? I'm sending you fire by night and manna in the day and water out of the rocks. And you just, you still not getting it. Like you, I'm here with you, but you still not getting it, right? Some of us are like that. We are tough headed and, and just, we think that everything revolves around us and around our timing and my will and this, no. God is trying to show us, like, listen, if you just hold on to every word that I have in this here word, okay, hold on to every single word that I have in here and go through what I am allowing you to go through, you, you'll spend less time going through tough circumstances and situations than you actually sitting there complaining and murmuring about your situation. Because you can't change it anyway when you're complaining and you're murmuring and you you can't change it anyway, right? So we just got to go through what we got to go through and learn what we have to learn in the storm. Y'all, the storms don't come to kill us. It comes to make us stronger and it comes to take us to the place that God is get, trying to get us to. But if we look at the storm as negative, right? Instead of using it positively, we look at the storm as negative. We're gonna stay in the storm. That's why when Jesus was walking on water, right? He was at peace. And you're wondering why, why is it that he was at in, in so much peace? Because he didn't allow the storm to overtake him. He overtook the storm by being at peace. He overtook the storm by resting in it. Oh gosh, that's a word. Jesus, rest in the peace of God. We have to learn to rest in the peace of God instead of allowing our circumstances to to overtake us and to kill us. Some people die in the situation. And I'm talking about not just spiritual death, I'm talking physical death. They die because the, the circumstances, it overpowers them, right? They allow it to get into their minds and into their hearts and all these things. And they die before even getting to the promise, y'all. Come on, we gotta be a people of wisdom that when things happen in our lives, we gotta use the word. Is it easy? No, it's not going to be easy. It's never going to be a cakewalk. It's never going to be. But what happens is we know that we have our father that we can trust in and that he is with us in the midst of it. And for me, that's enough. As long as I know I'm not going through this thing on my own, I know I'm going through it with the, the, the God of the universe, the creator of the world. 
I know that I'm going to get through this thing and it's going to be okay right so we can't look at the time frame we can't look at the length of time it may take us take us a day to get through the, the, the storm it may take us years right it may take us years look at sarah and abraham lord they was in their 90s before they received the promise right in their 90s and even sarah was just like here yeah, right that ain't gonna happen i'm old like am i supposed to have a baby and i'm this old but Within that whole circumstances, God still was a man of his word and the promise still came to pass, right? And so we have to know that our our blessings is wrapped up in our trials because once we get out of the trials, you see the light. There's always going to be a light at the end of the tunnel. My mother always says that to me. Baby, there's always going to be a light at the end of the tunnel. And as long as you can see that light, you're going to get out. You're going to get out. And so I just want to encourage you today that as long as you see that light at the end of the tunnel, the light being Jesus, you're going to get out of the circumstances, right? And your blessings is going to come with you. Amen. Adverse circumstances are normal in a fallen world. This is a fallen world. We're living in a fallen world, right? Because when sin entered into the world, all these things started coming in. It wasn't supposed to be that way. I ain't going to teach on that. That's going to be for another time. But circumstances are normal in a fallen world. So it's normal in the world system to go through craziness and chaos, right? But in God's kingdom, it's not normal. It's not normal. Expect them each day. So he's not saying that when you wake up today that you're not gonna have a storm he's not saying that when you wake up tomorrow that you're not gonna have a storm right he said every day <laughs> you're gonna have to expect them every single day because be it little be it big it's gonna be something that is going to try to take you out of your mindset of peace something is going to test you it's gonna be something it's going to be something. So you can't get up every day and talk about, oh, Lord, this is a great day. And today you can you can frame your mindset to think that and to speak those things that be not as though they were. You absolutely can speak to your circumstances and then your day does become peaceful. But you're going to be tested. You're going to be tried. Somebody, something is going to distract you, is going to try you, is going to try to take you off your peaceful journey. Something. Each day is going to come. Expect it. He said to expect it each day, right? So you got to have, you got to wake up every single day saying, Lord, I don't know what this day holds for me. And while trials and temptations and all these things may come, Lord, I know that you are with me and I know that you're going to bring me through the day. And so I choose to focus on your peace. Though these things may come, I choose to focus on your peace. I choose to focus on your word. I choose to focus on you. I choose to focus on your promises. I choose to focus on the greater things that is on the inside of me. That's what I choose to do, right? But he said, expect them each day. But here it goes, here it goes, here it goes. Rejoice in the face of hardship. For I have overcome the world. Y'all. I love my devotionals. Rejoice in the face of hardship. I'm going to celebrate. I'm going to rejoice, right? I'm going to choose to be happy because this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. So whatever comes my way, I am going to rejoice, right? Let's go to let's go to Matthew 13 46. Right? I am going to choose to rejoice. Because no matter what comes my way, I got to, I got to rejoice. I got to rejoice. I gotta be happy about it. Because when you have a happy attitude, your day goes better. Your day goes easier. And let me tell you something. When you are living around people and you have a happy attitude, it rubs off on other people. Because don't nobody want to be around nobody that's miserable. Let me tell you, I don't want to be around miserable people. If you are miserable, there goes the door right there. I, you, you are not welcome. 
okay you are not welcome in my house you are not welcome in my my circumstance you are not welcome in my mindset you're not welcome in my personal space you're just not well i don't have time for miserable people i don't have my, my husband he says there's a miserable uh, christian <laughs> miserable christian center for miserable people listen miserable church of christian center or something like that he says but i don't have time for that right i don't have time to hang around people that have my problems I, i'm trying to get around people that have my solution i'm trying to get around people that it that that's happy right because happiness is a state of mind rejoice rejoicing is a state of mind you guys it's a lifestyle and if we can't rejoice when we're going through something oh my gosh how are you gonna get through it how are you gonna get through it sometimes you gotta just be happy you know what i'm saying you just gotta choose to be happy okay let's see here what it says matthew uh 13 verse 46 Anybody do that with their Bible, you know, like grandmama used to do? You just touch your touch your finger with your spit. That is so gross. I'm telling you, it's so gross. <laughs> okay, it says, okay, so Matthew 13, 46. This is the, it's the parable of the hidden, hidden treasure, right? I'm going to read it from 44. It says, the kingdom of heaven is like treasure hidden in a field. When a man found it, I'm reading from the NIV version. When a man found it, he hid it again. And then in his joy, went and sold all he had and brought, bought that field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant looking for fine pearls. When he found one of great value, he went away and sold everything he had to bought it. So let me tell y'all. It is that valuable. Peace is that valuable. The kingdom of heaven is that valuable. They went and sold everything they had just to just to achieve the kingdom of heaven, just to achieve that, right? And and the word is not literally saying for you to sell everything you have, but it's saying that everything that you go through, just just push push it aside, push it away, and focus on the thing that is most important, which is your peace. All right. I am loving this Bible study, you guys. If you guys have any questions at all, leave them down below and I will do my best to answer them. I am not a Bible scholar. I just love the word of God. And we will um, pick this up again next week, Thursday. All right. And we're going to get into the word. So if you guys are enjoying, um, you know, this positive vibe series, let me know. Comment down below and let me know what you guys, um, you know, think of it. If you're getting anything from it, if this has touched you in any way, if you're going through all hell is breaking loose around you and this has touched you in any possible way share that testimony down below and and let us know how god is moving in your life right because you over people overcome by the power of your testimony right and so we have to learn to be open and be real and be honest right we got to be transparent that's how that's how our brothers and sisters are going to be set free that's how people in the world are going to be set free when they come looking at your life they want to see jesus they don't want to see you they don't want to see me they want to see jesus right so we got to be real and we have to be transparent come on we can't be so heavenly minded that we're no earthly good right we can't be so much in the clouds and speaking in tongues and all that stuff and Act like we ain't going through nothing. Come on, y'all. The greatest testimony that you can have is that you're going through all hell, but you still maintain your peace, right? And people can look at you and say, dang, I know she's going through something right now, but how in the world is she able to stay so calm and so at peace and so like, you know, just, just calm? It's, it's the word of God. It's the Jesus in me. The Jesus in me that the Jesus in you, the Jesus in me, does the Jesus in you so easy. I know my husband called me. He's like, you're the first Kojic Jamaican that I've ever met in my life. <laughs> 
But anyway, you guys, we can have so much fun. I do have so much fun when I am doing these videos for you guys. And yeah, subscribe to my channel, like the video, share the video with your social media networks, and leave your comments down below as well. Remember that Jesus is Lord and that he loves you and that I love you too. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you guys in the next Positive Vibes. Have a wonderful, peaceful day, y'all. Bye.